What does true evil look like? It's a question that many screenplays and anime have failed to answer over the years. And Mahito is one of the best answers I have come across in a long while. And in this video, I will explain to you exactly why. Why this handsome little Frankenstein here is one of the most eerie, repulsive and horrifying villains in all of anime. Oh, a villain that clearly has been carefully crafted with a clever mix of human psychology and Gege Akutami's ingenious storytelling abilities to creep the hell out of you and make you loathe him with every pore of your body. A core piece of what makes the story of Jujutsu Kaisen so fantastic. That and what's the deal with all the hands? <laughs> This is the story of the most horrible and human curse of them all, Mahito. Ima, Ima, Kimi tachi. So ne. Mana wa mamoru ne. With Sukuna, I've already discussed one of the three major villains of Jujutsu Kaisen. And yet, just like Geto, Mahito is a completely different type of antagonist. All three of them represent fundamentally different versions of evil, which makes the story so much more interesting and versatile. This seems like a good time for a drink and a cold, calculated speech with sinister overtones. And yet, out of all three, Mahito is the only one that Akutami has created with the intent to portray true evil. Evil, the most dangerous and vile curse spirit in the story right now, and I would even go so far as to say overall. But as you've probably already figured out, Mahito's horror lies not within how powerful he is, but in his personality. Don't you think it's interesting that he is the only curse that takes the form of a human in the story? Mahito is all soul this and hands that, oh and he has the same blue eyes that Gojo has. <laughs> The genius of Mahito's character that will be crystal clear once you make it to the end of this video is completely based on the unique role he takes in the Jujutsu world. Despite being teased to us as one of the most scary curses, what stands out most about Mahito is actually his extremely human appearance. His Frankenstein-esque look paired with a quite extroverted and curious personality as well as a soft and kind voice that lets every hair on my neck stand on end. <laughs> At first glance make him hard to differentiate from the equal quirky looking Jutsu students. In fact, it even takes quite a while before we even get the sense that this is actually the most purely evil character in all of the story. Especially his early relationship with the harshly bullied Junpei creates the initial illusion that this might actually be an exceptionally nice curse. Well, you know how that turned out in the end. Mahito serves as the embodiment of human selfishness, cruelty and desire. If you pay close attention, you will see that all of his terrible traits and flaws are perfectly human ones. Human pettiness, human jealousy, human fickleness. Mahito represents all the bad that humans do to themselves and to others. The very worst of us. <laughs> <laughs> what Akutami has done here is masterfully embody the moral theme of his story into this one character. Curses versus humans. Because just like Yuji is both human and curse, Mahito is also both curse and human. And this parallel is no accident. There are no accidents. <sighs> In general, as the main antagonist of the major first part of the story, Mahito's most obvious role is in being a foil to the protagonist. As often is the case, these two characters mirror each other in many ways and find themselves inextricably drawn to each other. Both Itadori and Mahito are newcomers to the Jujutsu game. Itadori was just a regular high school dude until the other day, while Mahito has only quite recently been awakened in the first place. Now, this is just me speculating, but I would bet my left ball that someone had their hands in creating Mahito, no pun intended. I mean, the guy literally is stitched together 
but we'll have to wait and see. Nonetheless, both of them are extraordinarily powerful and have very polarizing views of the world. As becomes very clear in their first encounter under Nanami, both of them are basically children. <laughs> They both want to get stronger, test their abilities, and have their influence on the world while responsibly thinking through their actions and motivations. Just kidding, they're of course both crazily impulse driven and keep dramatically underestimating those around them. Both Itadori and Mahito live in their own little world, where they are the hunters, the gojos who force their will on the world. <laughs> Yuji trying to save anyone and anything that moves, and Mashito literally going full reptile brain, basically only ever following every impulse he ever has. Food, kill, play, moral. Mahito, with a child's curiosity, is testing his own powers, learning about the world, and even spending time with humans to transfigure out how they work. <laughs> The funny thing is that Mahito's biggest desire is proving to himself and to everyone else that he is the purest curse, the king of curses, if you will. Sorry. He tries to convince Junpei to live more like a curse, and yet the big irony here is that Mahito actually doesn't get how curses really are. Take the other intelligent curses that he's with. Jogo, Hanami, and Baby Cthulhu. These guys are probably ancient, born from people's fear of nature itself. They behave quite differently from Mahito. Yes, they're all somewhat murderous and hateful towards humans, and they all do seem to be dominated by their impulses, but they also plan ahead, they have a higher purpose that they're willing to die for, and they even care about their comrades. <laughs> Hell, let's be real here, Nanami is probably nicer than half of the Jutsu sorcerers themselves. Mahito, on the other hand, is like a textbook sociopath. He does everything impulsively, he manipulates those around him for his own sake, and when things get tough, he decides to run and afterwards is super smug about it. And he doesn't really care about the other curses around him. <laughs> Now, I'm gonna drop a big bombshell on you here, and if you didn't know this, you'll have to subscribe. Jujutsu Kaisen is not only heavily inspired by other shonen like Bleach or Hunter x Hunter, it is also filled to the brim with the psychological concepts of Freud and Jung, who both are considered the founders of modern psychoanalysis. Now, while both of these men had very different models of the human mind, both of them also had the theme of the it, the ego or the shadow, that basically describes the unconscious conscious part of our personality that you're unaware of but that drives your basic needs, desires and instincts compared to our more active conscious minds. Well, does man, do you think, need to have the concept of sin and evil to live with? Is this part of our nature? Well, obviously. And of a redeemer? That is a, an inevitable consequence. It's something that nowadays you might stumble across as the feeling versus the thinking brain. And while we all love to think that we make rational decisions all the time, guess what? The feeling brain is in command. As the psychologist Jonathan Haidt put it, we're basically the elephant and its rider. We can consciously try to steer our feeling brain in the direction we want to go, but if the elephant really wants to do something, it'll do it, and there is nothing you can do about it. Mahito is the embodiment of exactly that. He is pure feeling brain, pure instinct, pure pleasure, pure doing what feels good in the moment. He is only that. No emotions and no rationale. Something that even the other curses do have to some extent. And that is exactly what makes Mahito so absolutely terrifying. Why he creeps you the f out. Mahito is a mirror for us humans in which we see our rawest and darkest instincts reflected right back at us. In other words, Mahito is the essence of human evil and human darkness compiled into one character. And the reason why Itadori specifically hates him so much is exactly because of that. <laughs> He 
sees himself reflected in Mahito. All the stuff that he feels insecure about, his values and ideals. Itadori's big thing is saving people and under no circumstances hurt them. And yet Mahito not only plays with the life of his own comrades, but he also forces Yuji to kill himself to kill himself and break his own rules. <laughs> But I think the true reason here lies even a bit deeper. Consider this scene here, where Gojo assesses Yuji's personality. Yuji wants to save everyone and condemns killing, but he has no problem, right from the start, to absolutely decimate curses, even though they still take the form of living creatures. To him, curses are basically all the same, their existence doesn't have any worth in itself, and he doesn't flinch to terminate them if necessary. Does that sound vaguely familiar? <laughs> Mahito shows Yuji that they're pretty much the same, just on opposite sides. And the fact that the lines between humans and curses keep blurring more and more as the story continues just places more contrast on this fact. Mahito, in a very interesting way, slowly but steadily forces Yuji to deal with his own insecurities, his own values, and his own hypocrisy as a person. It's not good enough to just think that every human life is valuable, he now has to find an answer as to why. And we can see this clash of their ideals in how both of them try to push Junpei to act in their sense of their respective values. Junpei. But there is even more humanity in Mahito that makes his horror and evil seem even greater than it already is. If I were to ask you why X random psycho monster in Y scary movie is evil, you might say something like, well, she is evil because she doesn't have a heart or a soul. So what does Akutami do? Make Mahito all about just that. <laughs> Mahito can literally see and manipulate souls, the essence of everything. And so for him, the soul is nothing special, but just something else that is just there. No difference between a plant or an ant or a human, except for human reasoning, which is exactly what Mahito despises the most. He simply transforms and plays with people's souls just to try out his powers. Using people's lives and their death to break Yuji? Accelerating. The harrowing fact that Mahito is playing with the most valuable thing a human has, their soul, their essence. essence. Which at least in a Jujutsu world is a very real thing, is wonderfully represented by the concept of hands. <laughs> Mahito has the power to touch the essence of who you are. Essence. His hands are literally the touch of death. And that's also what makes Mahito so brilliant as a piece of writing. He represents you as a human, but also death itself. It's all torment, violence, and cruelty. Notice how people keep reflecting on their ideas about and their relationship to death whenever they come into contact with Mahito. Nanami, Junpei, Itadori, Looking at Mahito not only mirrors human life, it also mirrors human death, the essence of human experience itself. And that is an absolutely terrifying thing to do, contemplating our own mortality and faultiness. Which is exactly why Mahito, in my eyes, is absolutely perfectly written evil. Something that, as Akutami mentioned in an interview, he was absolutely going for. So. Is Mahito all evil then? No character arc except growing stronger and more cruel. I would say, eh, kind of, not really though. Mahito's answer to the central moral question of the story, what does it mean to live a good life worth living, is pretty simple. Life is worthless, so I should just enjoy myself and follow my instincts. Now, can we actually say that this is wrong? Well, I think we can, and I hope you do as well. The answer that Akutami is going for, for all his characters, is that a good life worth living 
always includes forming relationships and bonds with others. You can even see the curses doing it in their small little curse family where they all care for each other. In short, the moral of Jujutsu Kaisen is that true happiness and purpose comes from acting compassionate towards others. That's why Mahito is wrong. And the fact that he tries so hard to be the perfect curse just underlines how human he is. This irony is actually wonderfully represented by his name. Do you know what Mahito literally means? True human. Yeah. I'm Ironic. Mahito is on a journey to figure out the essence of his own soul who he really is, and at some point he might have to face the fact that he's actually more human than Curse. And I really hope we get to see more of that, as I think he is the perfect antagonist for Yuji in the story. Don't get me wrong, Sukuna is absolutely fantastic, but he's way too complex and cool in my opinion to have the same sense of evil and horror that Mahito spreads on such a fundamental level. <laughs> <laughs> now for the bonus payoff of this video, thanks for watching this far. Why does Mahito also have this beautiful blue eye that reminds us so much of Gojo? I think that this is done quite on purpose, as the two share some very interesting traits. Their body language, especially their eyes, radiate absolute certainty of their superiority. They might appear childish and frivolous on the surface, but if you plunge into their depths, they have a deeper understanding of themselves and their desires than most other characters in the series. They might not get other people, but that's not really their priority either. And as we know, the eyes are the gates to the soul. What makes them so special is that both Mahito and Gojo can see things that others can't. Gojo's six eyes allow him to perceive everything about a person, while Mahito is capable of seeing the soul itself. This means that both of them see everything, which results in both of them being unable to see people as individuals. And that's why Mahito has the same blue eyes as Gojo. As we all know though, what is much more important than your soul is having a well-defined six-pack. Which is why the next video is about... <laughs> Make sure to watch Toto's video here. Thanks for watching. Peace. My best friend.